What's up, Tim KBA? One Tech Traveler here. This is Last Shelter. Finally streaming myself for the first time. And then we've also got our screenshot. I hope you like the new format. I'm in my first Eden Decidia. This is season five, week one. But this is gonna be an exciting video. Finally got the first batch of SX Heroes available to us. And we're gonna dive into that pool. Me approaching it of new heroes coming into Essex season where it's pretty fresh. Um, but also having a lot of the understanding of how well these heroes form in the top formations, their overall skill set, and that there's a total of 24 SX heroes. This is a pool of 12 and includes one of the two recent additions, the other one being Profit for Fighters, and the one you see here, which is the Huntress for Vehicles. So we're going to dive into them now. In the first SX hero pool batch, we have a total of 12 and in this pool, it's more weighted towards fighters than shooters than vehicles. So there's five fighters in here, which is Hunk, Sven, The Wanderer, Iron Sentinel, and Scarlet Siren. Four shooters, which is Valkyrie, The Betrayed, Rose Noir, and Predator. And then that leaves us with three vehicle heroes, Death Rider, Organic, and The Huntress. Now going by that, depending on how many tickets you have, you're more likely to pick up a fighter hero and then a shooter and then a vehicle but if luck is on your side there's like one top tier hero that's just essential in sx meta that you'd want to go for five i'd say great heroes that you'd be happy to have all serves their purpose so we're going to start from the top it is death rider uh, he is just an essential like top meta and he's kind of the evolution of captain ivanov pre-SX uh, just does straight up damage his skill set is kind of similar and um, but again he's just very consistent high damage outputs and then also just the way he self buffs uh, his team especially on his skill 8 that 60% might increase also 30% additional damage combined is crazy but also having that clarity status similar to Farseer he's just immune to silence disarm suppression and confusions he is the top pick of this pool so for new players coming into essex he's going to be like that biggest prize in this draw uh, the next five that i've picked are predator scarlet siren the huntress organic and sven predator she's pretty much the major honor of shooters she shares a lot of similarities with her also Pretty much her skill eight, where she increases damage by 12% and stacks up to five, which leads up to 6%, exactly the same as Major Honor. And it's just an overall like incredible support hero that buffs up uh, the troops around her, pretty much like Major Honor. You can form a really strong and a top shooter formation. Next one up is Scarlet Siren. So. I really like her. I think her skill set is very strong. She is a back row uh, offensive hero for fighters. Normally you'll see their awaken as a plus 15 of HP. She's just a straight up uh, offensive damage on her awaken and also her skill 7 for that 40% might. Uh, but her skills are really great. She's kind of a combination of Iron Guard for shooters in Legendary Season and Anne the Knight in Season 2. What do I mean by that? Well, Scarlet Assault targets the lowest troops in the enemy formation. So exactly the same as Iron Guard. Uh, she will try and kill off the enemy rows quicker. She also does some incredible uh, damage and very consistent as well. So uh, I really rate her for that. When then when comparing to And the Knight, she also attacks up to five times. Uh, I believe And the Knight does six, but she has just much more fleshed out skill sets. Uh, again, very developed versions where she will also apply relevant counters depending on the troop types you are against. So that is the sound for shooters, sound for fighters and vehicles. What I like about her as well is in addition to that, she also sets she also sets burning status and deals consistent damage while also providing a huge 50% skill uh, damage for any of your friendly squads that hits those burning targets. Uh, and again, she does it very strong. I really like her and forms an incredible fighter formation. So next up is the Huntress Hilda. Now she is very recent. And like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, 
as she was one of two other heroes uh, to join the Essex roster. The Huntress is a vehicle hero and she has two interesting mechanics uh, from her skills. Uh, one is a jungle jewel, like ignores the base resistance of the enemy squad. So you can kind of think of it as negating skill three of a hero, uh, where for the entire battle, it would ignore 25% of that. But for the first three turns, she will ignore the complete 50%. What's also interesting about this is based on her position in your APC formation, and she has the flexibility to pretty much be placed anywhere. Uh, but since she is more damage focused, you generally would have her in the back row. She would actually lock on to the same position in the enemy's formation. So if she's in the back row, she will target the back row. If she's in the front, she will hit the front. So that's a really interesting and a first of a, any kind of hero in Last Shelter. So interesting to see how that unfolds. Um, but I also think it's pretty decent, it's not crazy, but it's an interesting mechanic. She also looks to be pretty consistent with nice damage and activation numbers, also inflicting a counter of suppression, which is a full cancel of troop attack and combat skill. And then finally, Deadly Claws. This one is a big one and it's kind of where that comparison with Captain Ivanov and a Death Rider, it does a nice and healthy 600% damage and as the troop count goes down and if their troop count goes half from when they started battle that jumps up to 810 so really massive single damage we still don't know much about her hero combination or where she fits and, and lines up with everyone else very heavily focused on the offensive attributes and i think she shows a lot of promise so i'm gonna put her in uh, the great heroes that you'd like to have and we might sort of calibrate that as hopefully i get some experience if i get her or we'll just explore a bit more of the hero synergy let's go with sven now sven is kind of a double-edged sword so if you look at him on a combat point of view he's just pretty underwhelming compared to all the other SX fighter heroes that we'll come across uh, who just absolutely blows away. But when it comes to Eden, Sven is like a must have. Uh, he pretty much forms the best formation when it comes to force tiling with super high poison even at 100%. So you could probably take a level 16 if you have a maxed out Sven and the right combination. That's where I see his value. He's very situational, uh, but it means that he has a unique purpose of when it comes to Eden, when it comes to tiles. And especially if you are free to play players that are kind of dependent on luck and don't have a crazy amount of like tickets to work with, um, being able to have him will just give you a leg up in Eden. So that's why Sven is kind of ranked right up there with the others, but for combat, don't use him. Uh, and then finally, it will be organic. I was kind of, I mean, an ring whether I would put him that high, just considering um, the saturation of vehicle heroes, but I've decided to put him there because vehicles are pretty much the most often used with just how fast they are. Good damage, does a lot of countering. He's also another hero that actually inflicts Confuse. So pre-SX, that was Tech Priestess in Season 3. Confuse is one of the best counters that you can have, which randomizes the targets that the enemy's skills are going to hit. So it could hit their own both on a troop attack and combat skill. Uh, here he does that for vehicles and it's also for two turns. So he's just an overall like really well balanced uh, vehicle hero that's best in the mid row. You kind of sit in the mid row, but he's so super versatile with just having a lot of like prep skills and his combat skills, uh, you know, can target the whole range. So very flexible, strong balance of counters and damage. Um, even in a saturated vehicle formation, he has a, a strong part to play. So that is Predator, Scarlet Siren, Huntress, Organic, and Sven that make up the next five of the top heroes. So Rosenwald, you pretty much want her in the back row for shooters. And she has an interesting skill set where she gains a mark of pursuit every time your friendly squad deals a normal attack. And when it accumulates to seven, and all enemies will be dealt 40% damage. So one thousand two hundred percent total and you kind of see a lot of her skill set is built around the idea to 
increase the number of troop attacks so that she can reach that mark of pursuit uh, quicker. Uh, her skill 8 Fatal Erosion is also very interesting. She's one of two heroes in this pool that has kind of like a lottery draw in their skills. So here for every two normal attacks she can randomly apply a type of counter. It could be Disarm, Silence, Confuse, Interrupted or Troop Recovery Blocked. Uh, the probability is independent and it lasts one turn. So she's got some interesting dynamics to her. Granted, she again is not the strongest shoot hero that you can get, um, but she is definitely more than serviceable and still potent uh, if she's a hero that you get and, and work with. So that's Rose Noir. The next one is we have Betrayed. He's also a shooter hero. Um, depending on your combination, you'll find him mostly in the mid row. And uh, yeah, you know, he is still very good at what he does and not as versatile with the hero synergy. And he's more of an offensive mid row uh, rather than a huge support that buffs up the heroes either side of him. Uh, but again, he has that sort of lottery draw on his skill eight, which is uh, throughout the battle, you might get any of these buffs, which is uh, troop recovery, might resistance tactile might to resistance in like buff by 60 percent and damage taken a decrease by 40 percent so some of those are better than others i would say the recovery could be pretty good um tactical might for sure uh, tactical resistance also pretty good uh, and then the damage taken decrease uh, is also pretty decent He's just got a bit more uncertainty in how he's going to perform because he might have a defensive stat when you might want more of an offensive attribute. Um, but overall, he does pretty good damage. Uh, just bear in mind, he's more of an offensive mid row. Uh, next one up, we have Hunk. Now, Hunk is generally known to be pretty bad and he's kind of like, in some ways, you kind of see him as like the commissar of like pre-SX for season four. He's just not great and it's only the heroes around him that kind of holds them up um, but Hunk develops a sort like a pretty strong and very specific formation um, where if where if you get him where if you get him and the other heroes sort of fall into place then he can work well and again he is for fighters and with just how strong other fighters are, he's definitely down the pecking order within that realm. Um, but again, you pair him with, so that's why Hunk is just generally not used. But again, if you get him, it's decent, you can develop him. And if heroes fall into place with synergy, then he could be pretty good. Kind of someone that does a little bit of everything, but not, but not really strong in any one of them. Finally, we have Valkyrie. So you kind of see we have most of the shooters in this bracket. Um, I like Valkyrie, I think she's great, she's a completely different front row shooter than what we've had previously, normally you want more like tankiness uh, or just yeah kind of like Dussex which is a big debuffer of enemy uh, damage, she's the complete opposite so she just bolsters like raw damage dealing output, she's a very starter focused hero so you can see a lot of her skills are around the first three turns after that that's where she loses a lot of her effectiveness so again she will make a very strong uh force tiling high poison formation with inquisitor and then patriot when if you look at the skill sets it's just really front loading a lot of damage towards the first few turns and that's what's gonna help you get that high poison tire but other than that there are better alternatives um, but if you get it she's still very solid we have Iron Sentinel. So he is the other fighter hero. Pretty versatile in terms of the range that he hits, but you'd want him around the front. Um, reason why is he kind of reminds me a lot of Caesar from season four for vehicles. Um, so he's that for fighters. Offers a little bit of debuffs and buffs. Not so much the counters, but just like straight up combat reduction. We see that in his skill two Vanguard protocol. It's a guaranteed one every turn and it's going to just target one enemy squad. Um, so not to the same extent or 
effectiveness of Caesar Solar V8 skill 8. And we see that in Vanguard Protocol, this guaranteed to activate every turn and it just targets one random enemy squad. So it's not to the same effectiveness of Caesar Solar V8. And it's also slightly different. It's kind of like the siphon ability where you just take a few attributes from the enemy and then he basically applies that to friendly squads. Not that great. Uh, again, the numbers are very incremental. There's no sort of stacking motion to that. His suppression protocol, which is which is a, a nice like counter for healing recovery block and also a damage reduction and then finally his skill 8 whereas in the beginning of the turn uh, he gives an extra damage increase that is stackable to two friendly squads uh, we also have this splash status what you see in like panther um, but here numbers are very small it's just 40 percent to enemy squads and it also sort of reminds me of S2 Viscount, so it's okay. Uh, I think he would be pretty content to have. Again, there's better heroes out there when it comes to fighters that are just going to offer so much more, whether that is healing or just the depth of their skill set. But kind of to an extent like Caesar, he he's kind of a situ situational fighter um, and he may have his, uh, his moments, so... It's serviceable, he kind of offers a different approach or option to the front row, better heroes out there. So that is Iron Sentinel. And then finally, that leaves us with the last one, which is the Wanderer, which is a shame because I think the Wanderer looks super slick and I was pretty hyped with his design. Um, he's kind of got like a samurai or ninja shinobi sort of look to him and his armor looks dope. But again, skill set wise, he's just doesn't hold up well. He is a fighter hero and you'd place him in the mid row. Uh, again, there's so many strong fighter heroes, insane amount of healing. I just have very strong skill sets for offensive duty. Yeah, like he's not really strong in any of them. Uh, just gonna deal some damage, gonna be able to uh, avoid some damage taken, but he has no healing. He's pretty inconsistent and his damage is so-so. Um, so that is the overall 12 heroes now now the big question is should you be dropping your tickets in this pool if you are stepping to your first sx season and these are the first set of sx heroes it's a pretty decent pool it's just you're kind of going against the odds and the probabilities so if you have luck on your side great because i think there are a lot of great heroes that you can build a decent foundation on my picks generally would be death rider predator the huntress and scarlet siren like those ones i'd be super happy with sven would also be on my radar i would only say he's worth how much i rate him if you have panther and Ivanov. so if they're well developed or you have that duro and then the other ones i'm less excited about i wouldn't mind a valkyrie Yeah, I wouldn't mind Valkyrie, but to be honest, it's those first five that I mentioned. And Organic, I, I would be pretty content with him because vehicles are in the meta. You kind of want to flesh out your vehicle formation. I've definitely got capacity and space to, you know, take some new one in the mid especially. So he would fit me well. Uh, but the other heroes, mainly because they're, they are super effective in their positions that they work with and whether that's trying to build the strongest formations or whether they are just you know very strong heroes themselves individually yeah like those ones would be it for me but if you don't have many tickets the other pool could be better um shooters you'll get a much stronger option i would also say you get more carry options only having a few amount of tickets is going to make it very risky Again, you could be lucky, which is great, but if you only want to... And in terms of maxing in this heroes, you're going to need a lot of tickets, generally over a thousand. High reward, high risk sort of pull. If fortune favors the brave, then this could set a good base. 
but if you could wait until the next pull, you'll probably find very strong heroes in the second batch. So that is the first Essex Hero batch pull. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for joining me, Team KBA. You can find more of my last shelter guides on my website, onetechtraveler.com and join the Team KB community to see more awesome videos like this one across my tech, travel and gaming. You'll find Last Shelter and my gaming playlist. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, keep being awesome. Peace.